Hey everyone, it's me, Nita, and welcome to my channel. On today's video, um, it's going to be a market prep. So basically, I'm gonna spend tonight working on prepping some scrunchies, possibly some bell bottoms if I can get around to it. Most likely, I won't be able to get around to it. But basically, I have a big giant bag, this big old bag full of fabric that's been cut and prepped for scrunchie making. So basically, I'm just gonna go ahead and try and get through as many of these scrunchies as I can. Now, I already have a bunch of scrunchies already prepped um, for tomorrow's market, but I just wanna try and get as much like new inventory and more inventory up because this market's supposed to be very big. Um, it's about 650 families that usually attend this market. It's a yearly market, so I'm anticipating a big turnout now. This one I've been super excited to do. I've been waiting over a month, I think, for this event. So I'm really, really excited to try this one out. So I just wanna make sure that I go in with as much inventory as possible. Um, I could prep bell bottoms, but I honestly want my scrunchie, scrunchies to be like the main focus for everything. So um, I, like I said, I do have bell bottoms like prepped as like a display. I bought some clear inserts to put all my t-shirt samples in so I can have like a binder um, for customers to flip through. And if they would like, they can place um, an order. And because the market that I'm attending is like kind of in my neighborhood, I can um, do like I could do deliveries, I could do next day um, shipping, something like that for the customers to kind of entice them to ordering from me through there and then I can just work on whatever orders that I get from that market the next day basically and get them out to them on Monday. Whether that be in the mail or I can just hand deliver it myself. But um, let's just go ahead and get started now. I'm pretty sure this video is going to be just one really long video because I'm also going to include me setting up for the market me at the market and doing a market recap and letting you guys know exactly how much money I make at this event, considering it's supposed to be a big one. I'm hoping that I'll have a good turnout. The booth fee was only $30, so the price for it isn't that, actually no. The price for the booth was $55, I take that back. So the price of the booth was $55. Now, people said at the last craft fair that I went to, they said that the higher the price for the market, the better turnout you'll have majority of the time. So um, this is one of the higher ones that I've paid for. The last one that I went to, I only paid 30. This one's gonna be 55. So hopefully, because I'm paying a little bit more, there'll be a better turnout. Fingers are crossed. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this event will be a lot better. Um, the last craft fair I went to, I'll make sure to leave that video up here for you guys. Um, it was okay, it was extremely dead, but for how dead it was, I did pretty well. So um, this event's supposed to be busier, so I'm hoping because it's busier and it's gonna be primarily kids and kids love scrunchies, um, I'm hoping that I, I do good. Um, I do wanna show you what I have prepped already. My husband also made me a new scrunchie stand as well, so I wanna show you guys that and then we'll just hurry up and get to work. So luckily, I only have like nine open orders on Etsy, so things are starting to die down after that holiday rush. Now I basically just have birthday outfits that I need to do. Um, I only have nine birthday, either birthday outfits or just pants. So I don't have to worry about this until Sunday, so tonight and tomorrow my only thing that I'm worried about is making scrunchies. So. I have this one bag already filled with scrunchies. I have this basket full of my samples. There's some scrunchies down at the bottom of that. I do need to make some more business cards. Yeah, I still need to make some business cards because I'm actually, I still have quite a bit. I might just make like another sheet of or two um, of some business cards. So I might do that tonight. But I have this basket full of stuff. This box has like all my samples, but I'm gonna put all my samples in a binder, so I'll be doing that tonight. Um, I think I have, um, and then I don't have a lot in here. I do have some ornaments. And I don't know if I'm gonna add anything to them. I might add like Merry Christmas to them. I don't know. 
I don't know if I'll have time tonight. But I'll just have them plain and then I'll give them like an option if they want to add a name. I can deliver it to them either on Monday or possibly maybe the next day. I have all these scrunchy sands. Um, so basically I just have to throw these in a bag and these ones are ready to go. Um, however, I wanted to sell these scrunchy stands at this market, but Eric broke one of the blades on his saw and we just didn't have time today to go pick up a new one. So unfortunately at this market, we won't be selling any of the scrunchy stands, but hopefully for the next market next weekend, we'll be able to be able to sell these. Um, and this is the scrunchy stand that Eric built. Now this one, he did them a little too close to each other. So for this one, we'll either do like one chunky and another chunky here and then leave this one open. Um, or we could just do the smaller ones. I'll probably do the smaller ones on this stand and then the chunky ones on my T stands and also the other scrunchy stands that I just showed you. Okay, so that's basically what I have prepped um, right now already. So I honestly, I don't need to do a ton but I kind of want to do a ton just in case like the scrunchies sell, like I sell, end up selling a lot of scrunchies. I want to be able to restock them and have like backups, I guess. Um, and sorry if I seem like out of breath, I ate a massive burrito from Taco Bell and I'm just like super full and I'm like so full that I can't even like breathe. But, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start sewing up some scrunchies. I need to refill my bobbin it looks like so i need to refill my bobbin before i even get started like refilling bobbins is like my least favorite thing to do um and then i have i bought this like little container of a bunch of different bobbins so i can have like a bunch of different colors so i'm thinking i'm going to prep one two whites because i'm going to be in i use white the most and then for the other colors, I am all set. I actually might have to do tags too tonight, which I really don't want to do. So let's see how many tags I have. Yes. So yeah, I have to make tags because I only have these two little sheets. Um, I do plan on making that tag video. I know I keep saying this in like every video I post, but I've been so busy with Etsy orders. Like that's been like my primary focus. Um, so that I've been filming like work with me videos because that's really all I can film right now or market videos right now because literally Etsy orders and prepping for markets has been like consuming me. So I haven't had time to film any other content, but I'm hoping now that sales are slowing down, especially for the rest of December. I doubt I'm going to get like a ton of Christmas orders because people are going to stop ordering right about now because of shipping and whatnot and it probably won't get to them in time for Christmas so I highly doubt people are going to be ordering any Christmas items. Um, if I do get any Etsy orders it's probably just going to be for birthday items um, but I'm actually t totally off topic. I am like I probably have like two maybe three yards left of my sprinkle fabric and I need that fabric to fulfill orders but I bought um, bulk from China. It should be here soon. Um, they already gave me my UPS like tracking number, but the tracking number isn't giving me anything. So basically I'm assuming it's on the plane, hopefully. Um, they already shipped it, but I'm hoping that I get my package within this week because if I get any more Etsy orders, I won't be able to fulfill them until I get the fabric. And someone also bought fabric from me too on my website, um, I forgot to take the listing down um, because I'm out, um, but somebody ordered from my website, but they're totally okay with waiting until my shipment comes in, but I'm hoping it comes in with within this week so I can also send out their fabric order. And I'm thinking when I get paid from YouTube, I'm thinking of placing another fabric order just to be safe and then I also want to get like fabric for Valentine's Day, possibly St. Patrick's Day and Easter, but I don't know if I'm going to do bulk from China. I might just purchase fabric from a different smaller store 
Um, I don't know yet, but I definitely need to place another order for my sprinkle fabric because um, with China, they they're basically closed, not closed, but they don't really ship out any orders, at least with the company that I'm working with. They don't ship out any orders for the month of February because they have this huge holiday and basically almost everything shuts down in February. So I need to make sure that I get another sprinkle fabric order in at least before February. Um, so definitely sometime in January, I need to make sure and place another fabric order. Um, possibly a bigger order than I did last time because I only did 25 yards this time. Um, so I'm thinking the next time I place an order will be for at least 50 yards because I just, I can't be waiting around for fabric to be in stock because when I'm getting so many orders of the same type of thing, it's just, I want to make sure that I have it in stock because if I don't have it in stock, um, I just want to make sure though that I have my fabric in for like one of my most popular items because if I don't have fabric for those items, I won't be getting sales because a lot of my sales are for that specific type of design. So I just need to make sure that I have the fabric in stock and with like freight issues and it's like stuff being stuck at the port too. It's like, it's just stressful making sure that you have your stuff in stock because if I don't have it in stock, I won't make money. And if I don't make money, I can't buy the supplies I need. So I'm trying not to stress too hard on it, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and use these tags, make a few scrunchies with these, and then I'll take a break, do tags, and then get back to doing scrunchies. I'm thinking that's what I'll do because um, I don't really want to make tags right now because my heat press gets super hot and I just don't want to deal with that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just relax and sew some scrunchies and then, like I said, we'll make some tags. Okay, so... I need to refill my bobbin, but I kind of want to go through this bag about prints that I want or know that will sell well because they sell, sold well at my last one. Um, the striped one has been selling really well on Etsy and on and at markets, so I'm going to definitely pull out that fabric. All my Christmas fabric I want to get pulled because I obviously want to try and sell this so I can get rid of it. Um, my camo sold well, so I'm going to pull some of that out. Any cat stuff, any pet related stuff always sells, so I'm going to pull some of that out. Mermaid, definitely want to pull that out. Satin, sell well. Uh, oh, I have some Disney fabric too that I want to try and get rid of because I don't really use Disney fabric. And then I also have some Giants. I already had the tags sewn into these, so I'm not, like almost done with those. So I'm gonna pull those out. And I have some animal print too. So I'll start with those. I have more back here that's holiday print. So like I have all this already cut and ready. I'm gonna pull those out. This sold really well at my last market. So I wanna make sure and get some of those. I'm going to prep some more of this. And then I already have these done. I just need to elastic them. So, so I have quite a bit kind of already done, basically. So that's kind of nice. Um, so whatever I can get done tonight, I'll be very happy. But, um, but if I can get through this stack, I'll be kind of happy. Because um, there's a lot of good prints in, prints in here. So... We'll see how much I can get done. Oh, oh, oh. 
Okay guys, so I'm here at the market. I'm all set up. I didn't really record too much of me setting up just because I was scrambling to get everything done. Um, and I don't know how much I'll record be just because this is at a school and I want to be respectful to the kids and the parents so I won't be recording too much. But I just wanted to give you guys a little look at our table. We only have one table today, which isn't too bad because we were able to fit everything onto the table. But I really love how Eric Stan came out. I think it looks perfect. I have a good amount of inventory. I brought a binder so people can kind of see all the shirts that I offer. And then I have all my bell bottoms in the front for customers to see. But I'm loving how everything is looking so far. Hopefully I do well today. I'll definitely keep you guys updated. Okay guys, so I just want to check in with you. So, I have sold five scrunchies. This is the regular scrunchies. I didn't sell any chunky scrunchies, surprisingly. My last market, the chunky ones were the popular ones. But for today's market, just the regular ones sold. Um, it is packed here, it is busy, but nobody's buying anything, at least from my booth, so. Um, it's a bummer, I really thought this was gonna be like the market to go to because it's an elementary school, there's a ton of kids. The kids were super interested in the scrunchies and like my keychains, but the parents, they just, they're not wanting to purchase. So, I don't know what's going on, um, not sure. We'll see how it goes. I still have like two more hours left, but I will check back in with you guys in a bit. Okay guys, so it's almost a week since uh, that market, almost a week, about five, six days. But I went into that market thinking that I was going to do extremely well, um, but it's actually a huge disappointment. So I thought I was gonna do well at this market just because I knew there was gonna be a lot of kids, a lot of preteens, um, and just a lot of families there in general. But for whatever reason, um, the families or the parents, they just weren't buying anything, at least from my booth. Um, I noticed that a lot of people around me too weren't getting a lot of buyers at their booths. Um, so I think with that event, parents were there with their kids to do like more of like the Christmas activities. They had like, games for the kids to play, they had raffles, things like that. They had food there, uh, Santa, they had kids playing and performing music, there was cheerleaders, so I think a lot of the parents were there for the entertainment purpose of like the whole event. I don't really think they were there with the intention to buy anything. Um, now I did get some sales, so I'll kind of go over that with you guys, um, but I thought I was gonna get a lot more sales. Um, but basically, um, the booth costed me $55. Um, so some of the scrunchies that people purchased, they all purchased regular size scrunchies. I, I did not sell one chunky scrunchie at all, which is super weird because the previous craft fair that I went to, that was the only thing I sold. So super, super weird, but I only sold regular scrunchies and I sold two of my TikTok ones, um, two Christmas ones, actually three Christmas ones, one mermaid and one unicorn. So I also sold a pair of bell bottoms as well. So I still have to make those bell bottoms and have the customer pick them up. Um, so I haven't made those yet. I'm just waiting back to hear from the customer on what size they would like. They did pay already through Venmo, but I'm just waiting on them to confirm the size that they want for the pants so I can get started on making those. So my to grand total was $69, which was $1 more than my previous craft fair that I did. My last craft fair I did $68, and this one I did $69. So I did a dollar more, but it was way it was way busier than the last craft fair I went to. The last craft fair, it was like, dead. But with this one, we had so many people there, but nobody was buying anything. So I did get a few families, um, a few interested families that bought a few scrunchies. Um, but f with the booth costing $55 and me only making $69, it just didn't, it wasn't worth it. But I do understand that with doing craft fairs, um, they're hit or miss. Sometimes you're going to do really well at them, sometimes you're not. So, so far in my craft fair and doing markets experience, 
My very first one that I did at the flea market, I made over $100. That one was my best one. Um, and currently my two craft fairs that I went to have been okay. Um, definitely not worth my time. Um, I did network and chat with a bunch of different people, chatted with other small businesses, um, chatted with customers to potentially do um, like custom outfits for uh, pageants. So I did talk with one mom who has her daughter enrolled in pageants and I showed her all my reviews on Etsy. I even showed her some pictures of some kids who wore my bell bottom outfits for their own pageants. So that's kind of nice because that could be a potential buyer in the future. I did give her my business card. I had her follow me on Instagram and hopefully she'll reach out wanting to purchase an outfit or I can even make something custom for her. Um, for an upcoming pageant um, so that would be really nice and if she does reach out and she does purchase a pageant outfit for me I could be someone that she could always go to for any future pageants that she has with her daughter and any of her friends who do pageants too she can also refer me as well so going out to these markets sometimes you know you don't make a ton of money, but you could make a lot of potential money and build a good customer base. So it's a lot of networking, which, you know, you don't get paid initially for your networking, but it could have a lot of benefits in the future. So I'm hoping with all the networking that I did, um, I'm hoping that'll benefit me in the long run. But each craft fair, each market that I do, I am learning a ton, a ton of things. Um, so I'm excited just to keep attempting to do well at these markets now. For my next two markets that I have, and they're actually this weekend, um, one is a really, really big market. Um, it's on Saturday, it's in Old Auburn. Um, and this is a yearly event, um, and it's a two weekend kind of event. And the previous weekend I didn't go just because I already had a craft fair booked for that specific date, but, but um, they had a really, really, really good turnout at that one. So I'm hoping that on Saturday we'll get the same type of crowd that shows up and hopefully it'll be a good, hopefully it'll be a really good event for me. Now this event too is also a yearly thing and um, the town is also a kind of small town. So it's kind of just like people who go out there, they know this event, they're usually regulars of this event. So most of these people I'm anticipating they're going out there because of the craft fair. Um, so I'm hoping I do a lot better. I did spend $75 for that booth. So I'm hoping I have a really good turnout because that's a lot of money to try and recoup. So I'm going all out with this market. So I'm totally changing up my whole setup for the craft fair. I am keeping the same stands, but I'm having Eric um, make me a lot more of the stands because I am gonna have a 10 by 10 space for not only Saturday, but for Sunday too. So I'm double booked this weekend, so I'm super excited. I have one on Saturday and Sunday, but Saturday's supposed to be the really big one, the big event. So I wanna try and just go all out and go as hard as I can for this market, just because it's supposed to be a good one. I paid a ton of money for it, so I need to make sure that I go out there and just give it my all. So my whole booth is gonna be set up differently. I got white tablecloths. Um, I did purchase a banner off Amazon that I'm going to be sublimating, so stay tuned for a tutorial on me sublimating a banner for my business. Um, but I got white tablecloths just because I feel like my table is too busy and I just want it very simple and just very white because I just want my displays and my stands and my scrunchies to really just be the main thing that people notice when they walk by. Um, with my previous booths, they're just, I had a black tablecloth and it was just too busy. And also the picture frames too that I had on my table were way too big. So I purchased some five by seven frames. Um, so I'm gonna be doing smaller signs for pricing. Um, so hopefully that'll also kind of help take away from my table looking too busy. So I'm hoping that my table setup will be a lot better this time and is really, a big eye catcher for people who walk by. So I'm trying to go all out for this market and for Sunday's market. For Sunday's market, it's going to be at a farmer's artis artisan artisan market. So um, 
I'm really excited for this one too because it's also a big Christmas event. It's by a mall. It's going to be at Sunrise Mall. So um, I'm hoping that because so many people are out and about and shopping as is, I'm hoping that they'll stop by and kind of see this big huge market um, in front of this mall and hopefully people will want to buy some scrunchies. Hopefully they'll be out shopping for their teenagers or for themselves and they'll want to get some scrunchies. So I've been working all week on inventory. Um, I haven't been filming it just because I'm trying to bust out as much scrunchies as I can. I do plan on making a bunch of bell bottoms. Um, I actually have a bunch of different knit fabrics that I've been hoarding. So I'm going to be making just some bell bottoms. No matching shirts to go with them, but I've been making some kids bell bottoms to sell at this market and um, eventually I do want to get like a clothing stand so I can have my bell bottoms in all the different sizes and all the different prints displayed out like better. I'm not going to have that for these up to coming markets just because I still need to buy lights um, because one of the markets is going to be at nighttime. So I need to make sure that I have adequate lighting. So I'm saving up for some stands, some clothing stands or clothing racks to be able to display my um, bell bottoms, but I'm really trying to like narrow down what I'm selling to at my market. So I, pr I primarily just want to focus on scrunchies and kids bell bottoms. So that's my main, main focus and that's what I really want to focus on too with my branding is just kids bell bottoms, the kids matching outfits and scrunchies. So. I don't think I'm going to do any burp cloths or baby blankets. I think that stuff I'll just uh, save for my Etsy shop. Um, so I'm not going to stress about doing that, but I definitely want to make sure that I have a ton of inventory for scrunchies and a ton of inventory for your bell bottoms. So I spent quite a bit of time this week just sewing up some scrunchies. Um, I have this big bag full of like pre-cut fabric, so I'm just every day trying to pull out some fabric and sew up some scrunchies. I have a big bin that I I'm trying to fill up because at these next two markets I'm gonna have a 10 by 10 space so I'm gonna have three tables so I want to make sure that I have enough inventory to just fill up these tables so yeah so I've been working hard luckily Etsy sales have died down too so I only have like 11 open orders right now but I've been getting orders out quickly and none of these orders have to go out for another week so I have some time to just focus on these two markets because these are gonna be the last two markets of the year and I don't know when I'll do another market. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do any in January or any in February. Um, this Sunday market is a weekly market at the same place so if I do well at this farmer's market I'm gonna try and see if I can just get signed up for two markets a month, um, maybe one market a weekend, we'll see. Um, if I could just have one spot though that I can go to regularly, it would be nice because I can build up a, a customer base, a fan base to where they'll know that I will be at this spot every week. So they'll know where to find me and if they need scrunchies, they'll know where to find me basically. So that's my goal with these two markets and for the next upcoming year. I'm not sure if I'm going to wait until like the springtime to start doing markets again because I know the cold weather kind of prevents people from going out and shopping because if it's too cold or if it's too wet and rainy, people aren't going to be out and about. So um, I don't know if I'm just going to wait till the springtime once it starts to warm up and the weather gets better. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see on how these two markets go. I am going to film both those markets. It's going to be in one video. So Stay tuned for that too. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe because I have tutorials on me prepping things for my craft fairs and markets that I'm doing. And I also do recaps and kind of give you just like tips and tricks and things that worked and things that didn't work. So if you want to do craft fairs, you know, you can kind of see what is working for me or what's not working for me. Um, or if you just need some motivation, definitely just make sure to subscribe. Um, I do work with me's as well for my small business slash Etsy shop. So if you just need some work motivation or some ideas on things that you could sell, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell too. So anytime I post, you know exactly when I post. And also 
we go live, um, or I go live, um, usually at whatever craft fair or whatever event I'm at, but I don't go live on my channel just because I have to use my phone for my square reader, just in case a customer needs to pay with their credit card or debit card. But we go live on my husband's channel, so definitely go subscribe to his channel as well so you don't miss any of the lives that we do at our markets. So I have his channel linked down below, so definitely go subscribe to him. Hit that notification also hit his notification bell so when we go live you guys will be notified so um i think that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it um i'm hoping that you guys are enjoying these market vlogs um i'm having fun with these markets i'm learning a ton um i get bummed out sometimes because i don't do as well and then i, I see all these people on instagram who say like they sold out on things at their markets or it was the best market that they had and I'm not doing so well at these markets, but I am determined to figure it out and crack the code on how to be successful at craft fairs and selling at markets. So that's a long learning process, but I'm determined to figure it out. <laughs> but anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.